With the Radix wallet for Babylon changing so much about how wallets generally work, I wanted to show you what it feels like to recover access to your accounts. Basically, what does it feel like if you lose your phone? Because this is a question I think a lot of people have. It's a mobile first app, it's for iOS and Android. And so the obvious question is, well, a phone's a very losable thing. What happens if I lose that? How do I get access to my accounts again? So I wanna show you exactly how that works. Now for most wallets, Backup is kind of a simple thing because the wallet doesn't do very much. If you think about MetaMask or anything else, it's just this thing that signs transactions for a given key. And so the whole thing is just back up your seed phrase. That's the only thing that really matters. The Radix wallet does quite a bit more though. In our case, it's not just sort of this like single key repository, it's keeping track of multiple accounts for you. Those accounts have individual settings on them, they have names on them. And also the Radix wallet is keeping track of stuff like the dApps that you've connected to and the personas that you've created and your security settings and all these sorts of things. So we also wanna back up those things. If I lose my phone, I wanna get access to all that same stuff. I wanna come back and have my wallet be set up exactly like the way it was before with all the same stuff and all the same settings. So we gotta back that up somehow. So really what we're talking about, when we're talking about backing up my wallet, there are really two things we're talking about. The first thing and the most important thing is making sure that you can control your accounts once you get back to your new wallet, making sure that you can actually sign transactions and you, you still are in control of those accounts. But also the second thing is saving all these settings and these other sorts of things in the wallet, which are not security critical, but they still matter to you. Now, once we get to multi-factor implementation in the Radix wallet, Actually, the first thing gets a lot easier. The, the control of your accounts, recovering access to that, is gonna be handled by the multi-factor system. If you set up multi-factor on your accounts at that point, when you come back to your new wallet, it's gonna automatically lead you through using your multiple factors to get access to your accounts again and basically put your new phone in control. Um, however, we still gotta do the backup of the other sort of setting stuff also. For now though, until we have multi-factor implemented in the wallet application, we do have to fall back to the seed phrase. We do, you do have to back up your seed phrase because that's what gives you control of your accounts. So for right now, we do have this two-part process of making sure that you can control your accounts if you, if you lose your phone, but also making sure you're backing up all the settings kind of stuff. And also backing up the settings helps you with that process of getting back in control. So I'll show you what both parts of this look like. Now again, the most important thing, for right now anyway, is your seed phrase. And so the way the Radix wallet works here is once an account has any XRD tokens in it, basically once an account actually is meaningful to you in some way, it will show you the warning you can see here. You can see on both of these top two accounts that have tokens in them, it, there's a warning there that says, back up this account seed phrase. In fact, if I go into that account, it's repeated at the top there. You can see back up this account seed phrase. Um, and it, to attract your attention. So all I have to do to back up the seed phrases is tap that, that warning. And if I do that, it's gonna do a quick biometric authentication to make sure that I am who I am before it shows me that. And then it's gonna show me my seed phrase. Now, unfortunately you can't see it right now because the wallet's actually pretty smart about making sure that you can't take screenshots and it's not streaming to something where someone else could capture it. It's like, I'm gonna show you that seed phrase, but it's up to you to actually write it down and save that in a secure location, just like with any other crypto wallet today. Um, you know, you can kind of see it here if I look here. Um, that seed phrase isn't meaningful, it's on testnet, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, what I'm gonna to wanna to do right now is write down that seed phrase of 24 words. Um, so I've already done that, so I don't need to waste your time doing that. I've got those 24 words written down here, and I'm gonna dismiss this dialogue. It's gonna show me this warning saying, are you sure you've securely written down the seed phrase? You will need it to recover access if you lose your phone. This is the important point. And the, you have to confirm that yes, you have indeed backed that up. You have written that down. Um, if you hit no, not yet, it'll continue to remind you to come back to it and do it later. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and say, yes, I backed it up. And once I've done that, you can see here that the warning has gone away. And if I go to the main screen, the warning has gone away there. It's like, I now know that you've backed up the seed phrase, so you're in good shape. Um, you can also, by the way, get access to this later if you want to. If you go into uh, your account security settings and seed phrases, you can see here your seed phrase. If I'd imported a, an, a, an account from the old Olympia wallet, you'd actually see an additional seed phrase there for that import from Olympia. But this one right now, I just have the single seed phrase, which is securing all the accounts that I'd created on there. Okay, so I've done that part of it. 
Um, and by the way, you also see at the bottom here that I've got some other accounts that I create with a larger ledger head hardware device. You'll also see how I'll recover access to those, but obviously there's no seed phrase needed for those because the whole point is they're secured by having access to that physical device. Okay. So now the other thing is, well, what about backing up the settings? Because that's not security critical, because this more is sort of something that's like, look, this is important to you, but it doesn't contain any seed phrases. It doesn't have any private keys. All that stuff is controlled by your seed phrase. We can put this into a much more automatic mechanism. So if I go in here to app settings and go to backups, you'll see that I'm automatically backing up here to iCloud. This is the default on iOS, on Android, that automatically backs up to, uh, to Google system. Um, and when you first create your wallet, it's automatically going to start pushing those backups of your settings to the cloud. If you want to, you can turn that off. That's an option if you want to. There's not really a good reason to, because again, there's no, nothing in there which controls your accounts. Even if somehow managed, someone managed to hack your iCloud account, they don't get access to your accounts or anything else like that. All they can just kind of see is like, well, here are your settings in your wallet. Not that big of a deal. Um, you can also, however, if you want to go down to export wallet backup file, this is something where if you want to have like a manual backup on your, on your computer, you can do that. You'd also use that if you want to like move backups between an iOS and an Android device. Um, but again, this backup is not your seed phrase. This is not, this is nothing security critical. And it just basically happens automatically to make sure it's super easy for you to recover everything if you lose your phone. So we're going to go ahead and leave that, that, uh, that cloud backup running and we'll see how this looks. Now, in order for me to like simulate how I would, what it would be like to use your phone, I'm going to use this button I've got at the bottom of the screen here where I basically I'm just going to delete the wallet. So if I hit reset wallet, and, but I'm not going to do delete iCloud backup, I'm going to leave that iCloud backup because obviously that would be the case if I lost the phone. I basically, I'm going to buy a new phone, I'm going to reinstall the Radix wallet on it, and it'll be like a fresh application. So that's what I'm going to do right here is reset this so you can see what that's like. So I hit reset wallet. Here we go. This is what you're going to see the first time you launch the app. In fact, if I close this, like this is the, you know, the first screen. And so you'll have the option of saying, I'm a new Radix wallet user or restore wallet from backup, which of course is what I want to do right now. So imagine I bought a new phone. I go, oh my gosh, I got to recover access to my accounts. I'm going to restore from backup. So I hit that at the bottom. And I go to this thing to choose the, the backup. I've actually got multiple backups here because I've been doing a lot of testing, obviously, for, for our uh, Babylon launch. But you can see that the one backup that's relevant here is this one in the list. I can select that. Uh, most people, you will only have the one backup. But if you do have multiple, you'll see them here. But anyway, you select your backup file. I can see that that was last modified today, very recently. It shows me the number of counts and personas that are included in that. Cool. I can also, if I want, restore from the backup file if I did that manual backup but I'm gonna go ahead and use the iCloud backup. So I, I hit that. And immediately, we are now going into the recovery process. So now my wallet has pulled down from iCloud. It knows what accounts I had before. It knows what they were named, all that kind of stuff. And now it goes, cool, now I need your seed phrase to be able to recover control of those accounts. This, by the way, is much nicer than what you get with MetaMask and other wallets, because normally what you do if you were doing this was just enter your seed phrase. But MetaMask has no idea what accounts were derived from that seed phrase. So you have to go through, if you've been through this, you have to go through that kind of stupid process of like re-adding your accounts until you get to the ones that actually had money in them and giving them the names again and all that kind of stuff. So the wallet has all that. All we have to do is just input the seed phrase so it can control. Um, and so it's showing me that it shows that these three accounts and my personas are secured by a seed phrase. And so I have to enter that seed phrase. So if I hit that button, once again, pops up a screen that you can't see right now because it's secret. Um, but this is, if you, if you could see this, this is just a screen where I would type in those seed phrase words. So if you give me a moment to do that, I will type in my words. This is gonna be the most boring part of the video. You could put on a little music here if you want. Twenty-four words is a lot of words. Unfortunately, once again, all of this goes away once we implement multi-factor in the wallet. You'll just go straight into a process of using those other factors to recover access. No seed phrase needed, unless of course you really want to use a seed phrase. You can choose that option too. It's just one of the factor options that you can choose from.
getting there. Just a few more. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to hit import, which you can't see. And what it did there is it took that seed phrase it compared that to the accounts that it got from the backup and says, hey, does this seed phrase actually work to control these accounts? And the answer is yes. It goes, yep, here you go. You've got access to all these accounts again. It also knows that I've got the ledger accounts that were added, added in there. It already knows it, 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 it saved because the profile included the definition of which ledger devices I'm using, which accounts those, those devices were securing. It doesn't have to have to ask me for this at all. If you're doing the Olympia import process, you'll notice that it kind of asks you to connect your, your ledger wallet so it understands that it can confirm that you do actually have that device. But in this case, it knows that the case, so there's nothing else. I automatically have those, and so I can use those accounts whenever I want. So I'm back in business. That's all there was to it. I just automatically recover from the cloud backup. It knows what my accounts are. I, I type in the seed phrase to recover access, and now I've got everything I had before, all the same settings, all the same account names, and all of my great stuff about dApps I've connected to and all that kind of stuff. So just that easy.